ready to, to go to the <clears throat> jugular venous pressure for that. We raise the head about 45 degrees. And uh, there, that, that'll be enough. And we just hold his head up there. And let me hold your head so there. And in order to find the jugular vein, you put your finger across and that will fill the vein. So I see the vein and I take my hand away and the, the top of the venous column is there and here's the sternal notch. If the, if the venous pressure was elevated, okay, you can rest down again, the, uh, the top of that venous column would be <clears throat> 4.5 centimeters higher than, <clears throat> the, than the, the sternal angle here. <clears throat> Uh, his venous pressure is not elevated. We also, if we were seeing the, the jugular veins, we would look for pulsations in them, and they have their own interpretation. And uh, uh, we, we, uh, if there are no pulsations and the venous pressure is elevated, then there's some obstruction, like a carcinoma of the lung, for instance, we would be thinking about. Now, while we're in this position, we we'll feel the lymph nodes here and here and there's nothing and we'll come to the neck in more detail when he's sitting up. So now we're ready for sitting up to sit up and you want me to go to the end here? Yeah that would be good that would make it more comfortable and we pull this off and here we sit behind the patient and we look at the spine, run the fingers down the spine and if there's any bump like that, then there's a collapsed vertebra there. And you'll see that in elderly people with osteoporosis and uh, <clears throat> then we percuss here too and look for symmetry. That's very good. Now this is a place that we listen for those those crackles, which uh, I was speaking about, which are particularly related to heart disease, and they are they occur in late inspiration. So take a big breath. Okay, another one. Okay, another one. And he has nothing there, so. For tuberculosis, we're listening here and here. Okay, now you can put this back on. The chest is clear, heart is clear. And we get you to sit and dangle your feet over the front here. <clears throat> and now we come to looking at the things which we bypass in the head and, and neck. And uh, I'm shining the light in his eyes. I'm not looking for the response of his pupils. And they're normal. Now I want to see how they respond to <clears throat> accommodation. Okay, just look at the head of the pin. Okay. Okay. And he's quite normal in that respect too. That rules out tabes dorsalis. Now we come to the mouth. You do need thumb depressor? This is just, this is fine for looking at the mouth and I say, ah, 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 ah see the pharynx, ah, okay. Ah. And uh, when I saw the uvula moving and uh, I, I saw the teeth are all in good condition, now we'll go to his ears, we'll ask him if he's aware of any deafness and he says no and I'll just confirm that by saying, do you hear that? Yes. And do you hear that? Yes. 
If he was deaf, then I would go on to other tests for the tuning fork and so on, but I don't need to. Now I'm going to look in his ear, and this is for perforations of the drum and wax and those kind of things. And that one's all right. And that one's okay. So now we need to look at the fundi. I'll just look right over there. Okay. Okay, and uh, now we're ready to do the, the upper limb reflexes. We're looking for a number of things, but bend your elbow and turn your arm and then put your hand, the thumb on the biceps tendon and give it a hit. And when we hit this, we're watching for contraction of like this. So just relax, let yourself rest there. And we're also watching for the, the, the relaxation time as seen in hypo and hyperthyroidism. So this, that's normal, see? You can see that, that's normal. Now if there was hypothyroidism, it would have gone, if there was hyperthyroidism, it would have gone, like that, you see? The relaxation time. And uh, this is always in uh, thyroid disease, of course, symmetrical. This is the triceps reflex. And the biceps reflex is C5-6, and the triceps is C7-8. And now we test for Movements, fine movements of a hand. So do this. Touch each finger with your thumb as fast as you can. That's right. So there's nothing wrong in the in the um, motor system in the upper limbs, and uh, we're ready to go to the lower limbs. So we come now to the to the knees. Just relax. That's right. Knee jerks are fine. And uh, the knee jerk is uh, <clears throat> uh, now the, the ankle jerk, sorry. Okay, the ankle jerks are S1 and 2 and the knee jerks are, S, are uh, lumbar three and four. If you cannot get these reflexes easily, then uh, have the patient kneel like this. And this will relax his ankle jerks very well. If a person has had a chronic um, sciatica, sore back for many years, Often the ankle jerks are absent, and that has no significance. Then we come to the Babinski reflex. Just take your socks off, on one side will be enough. Normally you do both sides, and with this you stroke here gently, and you watch the big toe. And if he was positive, this would go up like that, and that would tell you it's upper motor neuron disease. Okay. That's it. Now, <clears throat> the next thing that we would do would be a rectal exam. We're going to skip that, but uh, that would happen by getting him just to turn around uh, onto the bed in this manner, and and uh, you'll do a rectal examination. I'm going to skip that. Now, for testing sensation, we. Uh, <clears throat> We ask him to uh, 
to let me know in his fingers when he feels that ridge as I pass his hand over it. Okay, so he's normal for depth sense. No, And then for pain sensation, we use the pin. There it is. And uh, I'll pretend to poke him, but I won't poke him. <laughs> you feel that sharp? And he says yes. And you feel that sharp? He says yes. So we've checked it, pain and position. We don't normally test for, for temperature. Uh, because that is in the same pathway as pain, and uh, so we don't need to reproduce that unless we're looking for certain specific things. And so now we are completely finished, the routine physical examination, and we are going to check him with his blood pressure when he stands up. And you see, we did that whole thing in probably about seven or eight minutes, if you took out all the talking that I did. And uh, we've ruled out all the, the uh, main diseases. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, assume that we found that his blood pressure is high. And uh, with that, we want to know why it is high. And we also want to know if his heart is suffering. Well, we already found out that his heart is not suffering because his heart is normal. But we need to ask about angina. And he says he has none. And his blood pressure, when he was lying, was 110. When he's standing, it's 125. And that's a normal response. If his blood pressure had fallen when he stood up, that would have, have uh, identified that uh, he has hypertension and that there is some underlying disease causing it other than essential hypertension. So you remember it this way, normally a normal person who gets hypertension and that has essential hypertension, he's inherited that from his family, everybody has it, then <clears throat> he, when he stands up, in order to prevent him from getting dizzy, his blood pressure will automatically rise a few points and uh, that, uh, that isolates him as a, as a person with normal uh, arteries, normal heart, but a sensitive response to standing, and he w he's the kind of person who, from excitement and from other things like that, his blood pressure will rise. And it pretty nearly rules out things like pheochromocytoma, Cushing's disease, uh, polycystic disease of the kidney, and uh, all the rare causes of hypertension. So it's a very important test to do. Okay, that's all we need you for. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> and that took, well, it took longer than I thought. It took about 25 minutes. Thank you, thank you. Now you see he's standing, mm -hmm. and we watch him walk out. And this is to see his gait. We're not telling him that we're watching his gait, but, but so we, we watch it, you see. There. Now, okay, that's it. That's I it. had a patient once who, who had ataxia, hmm. and I thought she was a fake. So I, I did that, and she she performed, she, she staggered out like that. Then I watched her when she got into the parking lot from my office. She was, I was on the second floor, and she walked across the parking lot to her car, perfectly normal. You see? So on the basis of what I saw in the parking lot, I said, she is a fake. <laughs> so you need to 